Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. I hope you're all good. So I am super excited about doing this video because there may be a new pedal added to my pedal board. Today I bring you a video in association with the wonderful, awesome, great people at Boss. I'm sure you know who Boss are. Uh, and they've basically released a brand new octave pedal. This is the Boss OC5. Some of you may own the Boss OC3. My friend Rory owns the Boss OC3. I believe it's like one of his favorite pedals because it has like a fuzz in it. It has all sorts of different stuff in it as well as just being an octave. Uh, and you can get some really unique sounds out of it. So what's new about the OC5 as opposed to its predecessors? Well, firstly, we've got two different modes in the pedal. We've got a vintage mode and we've got a polyphonic mode. Vintage mode perfectly recreates the Boss OC2, which was the monophonic octave pedal that was used by all sorts of amazing players and bass players. Um, the only difference being now that you've got an octave up and an octave down, which didn't actually come with the original OC2. So that's really nice. Now the thing with the OC2 and the OC3 is that obviously they track pretty well, but one of the things they weren't was polyphonic. However, with the new polyphonic uh, mode within the OC5, which essentially means it applies octave to every string you can play chords and it applies octave to all those notes in the chord. But the thing that I'm really excited about with this particular pedal is it has a new range feature, uh, which you can see on the close-up cam here on the far right. What the range control allows you to do is blend in how much of the octave you want to hit each string, if that makes sense. So in other words, you could turn it all the way down to its lowest range, which means it will only apply the octave effect to the low strings allowing you to play chords and nice different voicings on the high strings without any octave effect happening. The reason that's so exciting for me personally is because when I play in Tosca and I do a lot of the drop tuning stuff and I'll be playing like a, a root note and then a ha and then like a major third or a minor third or something, I can apply the octave to just the root note to give me that really thick, powerful octave sound, but it's not hitting the higher string allowing, so it's, it sounds just like a thicker version of what I was already doing, which I'm really excited to hear. I definitely can't wait to get stuck in, so we'll just quickly run over the pedal super fast. First things first, it's got a guitar and a bass switch on the back, so it depends on what you play, but you can switch that in and out depending on if you're using a guitar or a bass, so that's cool. Uh, but the controls are as follow. You've basically got your, your level, your dry level, then you've got octave uh, plus one, and then octave minus one, and then you've got your range control. And then just beneath that, you've got the vintage and poly switch. So like I said, flick it to the left in the vintage mode. Tracking's n n not as accurate, but it has the classic OC2 vibe, which is really good. And then flick it over to poly, and then suddenly it becomes polyphonic and way more modern of an octave pedal. Another thing that's great about the range control is it works for both octave down and up. So really, it's kind of endless what you could make out of it. There'd be some really cool sounds in there. Um, and also you've got a second octave down as well to get really low. Bear in mind that the minus two octave only works in the vintage mode because when we flick it over to the poly mode, we're using that control for the range. You've got standard input and output and a direct out as well if you want to be able to use that alongside your dry signal. Bass players do that a lot, so that's really cool. Comes with a nine volt battery, obviously takes a nine volt AC adapter and that's pretty much what the pedal is. In this video, I'm gonna be using my Soldano SLO 100 into the Oxbox. I've got a Fender Strat, and I'm also gonna be using the PRS pause guitar, because it's literally, I don't think I've played it since I've lived at this house, which is shocking. So we're gonna try that as well. And then we're gonna use the Minors um, for some more modern stuff. So we can kind of hear it in all applications in the ways that I would use it. But without further ado, let's check out the Boss OC5 octave pedal. Okay, I figured the best way to go about this is to start in the vintage mode and then move to the poly. Poly being the part of this pedal that I'm most excited about, so let's get through the vintage mode. First things first, uh, this is the sound of the guitar. It's going into the Soldano straight in, no reverb or delay as of yet. <laughs> So the reason that I like using a bit of crunch with this is if you've ever heard Population One by Nuno Betancourt, there's a track at the end of that album and it's called Stiff, I think, and I was obsessed with the guitar solo in that. He's using, I think, an octave, an OC2 or an OC3, neck pickup, strat kind of sound, and it was just immense. So quick reference for you there. If you, if you listen to that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, let's engage the OC5. So at the minute, I've taken all the octaves out because obviously we've got uh, plus one, minus one, and minus two. 
and the direct signal I just want it to be at sort of uni so the difference between turning it on and off shouldn't be noticeable what's nice is you got a little extra boost to the front end so I can just turn it up a bit That's just nice because it gives you a little bit extra power when you wanna when you wanna be hitting the low strings with your octave. So, first thing. Kind of a random guitar line off the top of my head, but if you imagine that underneath like a bed of music, that would be kind of a cool sound. Um, if we try it with a bit of reverb and delay. Yeah, it's a cool sound, particularly when you've got it for lead. Yeah, that's wicked. I like that. Taking off the rhythm and delay again. This is octave one, minus. But what I find sometimes happens, especially with the old octaves, obviously it's not polyphonics if you play a chord. See that? Like it doesn't know what to do. And that became like a staple sound within the Boss octave pedal, like really good for single string stuff, but it did this weird thing when you start playing more than one note. But it's kind of cool. It's like the signature sound of the old school octave pedals from Boss. Like it doesn't know what to how to how to process it, but it, it works really well, especially when you use single string. So let me give you an example of the kind of thing that you can you can do with the classic sort of octave sound that I think really does have a unique edge to it. And you'll have, if you listen to any kind of math rock or anything like that, you'll know what I mean in the kind of sound of it. Sounds really good. It's it's got that for me that classic math rock vibe all over it. Um, but that's what I associate with the oct especially the octave up sound. I associate it with that. If you ever heard a band called Polymath, they do that. They use that effect all the time, and uh, it really it's synonymous almost with their sound. And same with sort of ma bands like Mars Volta and stuff like that. So. I like throwing the direct level all the way up, it just gives you a little bit extra zhuzh to the sound. Yeah, it's wicked. Sounds really good. Right, lower octave two. Let's have a listen to that. Take the reverb and delay back out. It's really good if you're going up into the higher register of things. Um. This is what Nuno would have done back in the day. 
had a bit more of this going on. So that's where you hear the second octave coming in and it works really well when you're higher up uh, on the guitar. And then the, the lower octave, uh, octave minus one, starts to come into play and to sort of take over when you get back into the lower strings so nothing gets too muddled. But down low. Obviously, as well, like bearing in mind this is in uh, E flat, so if you tune any lower, uh, the minus two is going to struggle, I think, but that's part of the unique sound of the original monophonic octave pedals from Boss. Anyway, we've kind of breezed through the vintage mode. You know, some people, you know, might use this for the vintage mode, but I know wholeheartedly that I would be using this for the poly mode because it's th that's the type of octave effect that I need within my my sound. So, at this point, we're gonna we're gonna put the range on full, take the direct level back down to halfway, and both octaves have taken out of the situation, and we're gonna switch over to poly. Okay, now we're in the poly mode. This is where it becomes way more what I'm looking for in an octave pedal. So let's see how it works. So firstly, I'm gonna demonstrate by turning up the octave minus one. So, put on some reverb and delay again. Now I play a chord. It's applying that octave effect to all the individual notes. sounds great and to be fair the tracking is lightning fast Yeah, I mean it works absolutely perfectly to be honest. And you know what I like I actually prefer the sound of the octave plus one on the OC5 than I do on the Pog personally. It's just a little less synthy organ sound which is something that I've always tried to steer away from. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird sometimes. It doesn't quite know what to do with those open strings. So the effect gets a little bit muddled when you come when your chords are quite uh, wide intervallically, um, considering there are high notes, open strings, low notes in there. It, you know, it sounded like it was going, well, I'm not quite sure. Or not necessarily that, it was just like the frequencies of the octave effect mixing together, creating some oscillations that sounded out of key. So anyway, that's not a big problem because to be honest, I'm really, really getting nitty gritty on that. swap guitars now we've had a lot of stratage so let's move on to the old PRS 
and see how it sounds. So we're now using sort of, well, higher output pickups. They're not full on humbuckers, but they're closer. So we'll see how it starts to handle things. Okay, and take the octave. There we go. Okay, that sounds good. I'm just going to turn up the direct. What I like about it is it's super, super tight on the tracking. You know what I mean? You know, when you start playing big chords, it, it's great, but it's like, it just sounds intense. It would definitely make for a cool effect in a song somewhere, that kind of sound. Yeah, it's sick. The tracking is absolutely fantastic. I can't really complain at all there. So before we go into the realms of full on hardcore, like, you know, gain and stuff, because that always happens on this channel, um, I'm gonna show you what the range does. This is really exciting. So I'm just gonna keep the low octave in. I, t I generally, with octave pedals, I only have a tiny bit of plus in, but anyway, this is what we've got. Okay, so I'm going to start reducing the range because at the minute it's on full, so you're getting. Now, if I take it to halfway, you can just hear it. Bearing in mind as well, this is in drop C sharp, so the lower you go, you got to affect the range control respectively. But on the top string, nothing there, but. So this is the thing, right, at this point, I wanna try and get the G string to not have the sound. There's just there a little bit, but does we, we still have it on the low string? Okay, so the plan is that you've got, but you can use, and there's nothing there, so. I don't know why I'm playing really heavy stuff with like a crunch sound. Okay, we've got some high gain now on the SLO. Okay, so now we're gonna throw in the octave. Everything off for now. So, we don't wanna hear a difference in volume. Okay, boost it a little bit, just push the front. And the range control is now doing its job. So in theory, it should work. That is so cool. Right, let's take it one further.
control is where it's at. That's just made everything so cool because now I can use this within Tosca to create those big wall of sounds even bigger and still create that intervallic jump where you're not get it's not clouding up. It's just giving me more intensity. <laughs> Yes. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is just play a guitar in drop C because the lower we go, the more interesting it's gonna become with this range control. So I wanna see how I can get that to affect it in the tuning I normally play in. So let's try that. Okay, this is the sound of the mayonnaise. Okay, it's fierce. <laughs> so. What I'm gonna do now is try and get this going. So, see what happens. Okay then, well there is a look at the brand new Boss OC5. The main thing for me is the range control. It's a great octave pedal. I love the fact that they've kept it original with the vintage mode so you can get those classic Boss octave sounds. But then they've gone full steam into the modern world with the whole polyphonic mode, which isn't necessarily the most modern thing because you know we've had polyphonic octaves for a while, but it tracks incredibly well. Lightning fast tracking. It's really, really nice voiced octave sounds, if that makes sense. Not too mellotron or like, you know, not too organy. Really complements the sound of a guitar. But honestly, the range control is the one. The fact that you can play a low note, and I've tried it in different tunings, you can play a low note and it gives you that octave support, that big beefy octave thing, but then you can play strings on top and they don't get affected by it. So you get this huge full range sound that is awesome hands down awesome so i am absolutely going to put this on my pedal board i really hope that when i try it through my stereo rig with the cabs and everything that it sounds fantastic and it does it impresses me as much as it's done in my studio but at this point yeah i think i found a new octave pedal to go on my board so thank you for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed the tones in it i'd love to know what you think in the comment section below as always thanks to matt knight and jay from boss for always being legends and sending me pedals to review so yeah, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Like, subscribe, and share. I'll put links in the description box. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all very soon.